Is a military solution in West Africa the only way out? Armed groups there continue to wage war despite years of French military operations. Has their mission failed? And how can stability be achieved? This is Inside Story. Welcome to the programme. I'm Hala Mahirdin. There's anger against France in West Africa at what protesters say is the flawed relationship between French armed forces and their African allies. Two people were killed and others injured in Niger last month when protesters tried to block a military supply convoy of more than 100 vehicles on its way to Mali. French and Nigerian forces uh, used force to break free from the hundreds of protesters. Protest organisers complain that local troops are under-equipped and are suffering disproportionate losses compared to their French allies in frequent attacks by armed groups. Protesters say those groups are often linked to ISIL and Al-Qaeda, who continue to operate despite years of French military operations. This is the third roadblock we've crossed. The students look angry despite repeated requests to calm down and disperse. We wanted to leave the base in the morning, but we were held up by demonstrators who were waiting for us on the road. We managed to push them back at first with the hope of maintaining order using grenades, defensive grenades, smoke and tear gas, and we managed to advance little by little. And before leaving for Niger, similar scenes in Burkina Faso, where hundreds of protesters trying to block the same convoy were met with tear gas and force. Since then, protesters angered by the worsening violence by armed groups have demanded the resignation of President Rock Cabore. He has promised to end what he calls dysfunction within the military. Three soldiers were killed in the latest attack in Burkina Faso late last month. We'll begin our discussion in just a moment, but first let's see where things are happening. Dozens of armed groups operate mostly in the border regions of the Sahel, that's between Mali in the west, Niger in the east and Burkina Faso to the south. Hundreds of civilians have been killed there during the past year alone. In 2014, France reinforced its military presence in the region by launching Operation Barkhane. Thousands of French troops were sent and army camps were set up around the Sahel to combat armed groups linked to ISIL and Al-Qaeda. They often attack French convoys carrying out reconnaissance missions and supply runs, as well as the local African forces, which support France's campaign. The local forces have suffered most of their losses in those attacks. Well, let's bring in our guests. Jacques Roland is a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute, and he joins us from Saint-Malo in France. And from Casablanca in Morocco is Adama Gay. He's a political commentator specialising in the Sahel and West Africa. First, though, let's talk to Asser Tiem Tori. He's a member of the Coalition of the African Patriots of Burkina Faso. And he joins us now on the line from Ouagadougou. Uh, it's good to have you with us, Asser Tiem Tori. I understand that you're protesting the French presence uh, in the Sahel region. Just explain to us why. Why are you protesting against France's military presence in Burkina Faso? Before uh, talking about the protest, let me come back uh, on the attack, particularly in Burkina Faso and Burkina in the Sahel. The first attack was uh, perpetrated in Burkina Faso. Uh, just the president, Mr. Uh, the president Kabore Rock, Bakrishan Kabore, take the power. There is many person who killing, and since this, the attack still gaining around our country. Many depleted uh, person without food, no home, and their life in the stress every day. And do you and think, I'm sorry to jump in, you, you talk about how life is hard, there is no food and there is a threat of violence. Do you think the French military is, is helping at all? 
the the young the young uh, people of uh Faso are uh, decided to protest it like uh, uh French military army here because we know in many 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 uh during the American the army are not do the good thing in our country and let the people kill let the uh, Burkina Faso soldiers killing in our land. And here, uh, the, the, uh, the, the French army, the French military army are there to protect the interest, the French interest. Like this, the young people are said it's not good, it's not able for them to do it. If you are here to protect the population, we can protect the population. If we decide to, to, to protect uh, the French interest in Burkina Faso, we are not agree with that. That, that's why we are decided to protect to protect him with the the army company who uh, let uh, who come from the Cote d'Ivoire trying to join the style namely Mali and Gao. Okay. Okay, Asser TM Tori, thank you so much for joining us on the programme. And it's good to, to hear from uh, you in the region why this is such a, a tense issue. Let me uh, bring in our guests in the studio. Um, we've heard from that, that protester, uh, Jacques Roland, that the, the, they have a hard life in Burkina Faso and they don't feel that the soldiers are protecting the people who are struggling without food, who are struggling with violence every day. Instead, the French soldiers are protecting their own interests. Uh, how do you respond to that? Yeah, we know it's a feeling that's been uh, simmering for quite a while, even in Mali, which uh, where France was first seen as a liberator and savior, and now is seen as an invader, because uh, the local population realizes that in spite of the strong military presence of France with 5,000 soldiers and actions against jihadist group in the region, uh, it hasn't stopped terrorist attacks. And we saw even in uh, uh, Burkina Faso, 57 people were killed, just uh, a couple of, uh, 53 of them, gendarmes, uh, just a couple of days before the French troops were going through the country on their way to Niger. So which motivated, in a way, uh, the demonstration and the decision to stop the convoy. And it's true that France is uh, has been uh, fighting this endless war without any apparent results. And we know that the, on, the military, on the military level, they've obtained some results, but not enough because uh, attacks have increased the last few years. The, global, the war on terrorism has not succeeded. But we know also that in this part of the world, the solution to the problems will not be military. It will be political and social. And uh, we know that in the Sahel, there are loads of problems for the population, uh, problem hunger, displacement, attacks, disease. So uh, France uh, trying to help is seen in spite of that well, as is, the ex-colonizer. So, well, well, who is France yeah. trying to help is, is my point, because you've said, you've said it yourself, the France is there, the, you know these things don't work, and yet they've been there for eight yeah. years. Who's trying, France yes, trying to help it. here? Uh, at first, the idea was to come to the rescue, and they were asked for by the, uh, the Malian government of the time, uh, uh, Ibrahim uh, IBK, Keita, and it was the France intervened as a result of uh, Malian demand because they thought that the jihadist group which had invaded, which had taken control of the north, were moving towards Bamako. Then the argument for continued French presence and an increase in the French presence in the area was the fear that there would be some kind of Sahelistan in the region, like Afghanistan, with all these terrorist groups uh, in uh, the countries of Sahel, which would in turn be dangerous for France, as we've seen when the uh, Islamic State took over in uh, Iraq and Syria, it led to terrorist attacks in France, the Bataclan, Charlie Hebdo, commandeered from there. So there was this fear, but up to now, we haven't seen any uh, 
uh, attempts on European or uh, French soil uh, emanating from groups present in uh, in Africa. So, uh, why is France there? Well, France got caught in this quagmire. Uh, now trying to find a solution uh, by uh, collaborating with uh, the five countries of the Sahel. Uh, we know the Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Chad, uh, kind of G5. But the uh, local armies are not uh, equipped well enough. And uh, there, there are problems, like in Mali, for example. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, let me just in jump Mali, in here. Yeah, the, 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 it's, back, it's, yes. a, it's a very troubled campaign, and it's a very long campaign. Uh, Adama Gay, uh, you have been watching this region for, for, for a very long time. We've had eight years of a French military presence. In your opinion, has uh, Operation, well, Operation Serval, Operation Barkhane, soon to be Operation something else, this has been a failure, yes? Of course, it's a failure. It has failed. And it's not surprising. If you look at uh, France's uh, uh, military uh, experience, uh, not just in Africa, but even in Europe or in Asia, and also in Africa, France has failed. Uh, France failed in Vietnam in 1954, when it was defeated at Four. Uh, it was defeated in Algeria in 1962 by the Front de Libération Nationale. It lost the two world wars, first one and second one, 1939-45. Well, let's focus and, on Africa. Uh, let's focus on Africa rather Africa, than... Of course, yes. Let's focus on this particular yeah. conflict because... Uh, yeah, but we need, you, you, you need to bring the context that France is trying to pretend as being able to help African countries when it includes it has always failed. And its intervention, even in African countries, you take Rwanda in 1994 with Turquoise, in Libya uh, 2011, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire that same period, has been failures. And now France is trying uh, to use a problem that is real with the presence of the uh, uh, terrorists in the Sahel region and the failure of leadership, political leadership, in order to stamp its presence as a new colonial power. It's the only power that is in an African country at this type of level. Even the Russians they are talking about are private forces. So uh, the French have not been able to fix the problem. Rather, they've been seen as defending their interests. People suspect them to be conniving with the terrorists, giving them arms. Also, they are trying to control the Azawar region, the northern part of Mali that is seen as a region that is rich with natural resources, okay. still uh, to be discovered. And also, France has not been able to address the political democratic leadership challenges and the other challenges like the monetary issues. So indeed, there is a lot of anger from the ordinary people in the street and in the leadership of Africa who believe that France is there just in order to transform some areas that has fallen uh, through the poor leadership under its control. That's the problem. I think people are angry, and they're not angry against France, but only also angry against their leaders, and they want change to happen in truth, not in a fake way from the French approach. OK, Jacques Rillon, I saw you shaking your heads uh, through much of uh, Adama Gay's analysis there. Yeah. Where, 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 where do you think is the problem? Because uh, we hear the point of view this is France is there to reinforce its, uh, its old imperial uh, reach yeah. or whatever. But is the problem, I put it to you, Jacques Roland, that, that the, the mission hasn't been clearly defined and France's mission in the Sahel region has been one of simply containing a problem where it is rather than trying to fix it? Yeah, we know it's an insoluble solution. Uh, I don't we don't want to go back to the failures of the French army over the centuries. Uh, but but has there, this been a failure? Uh, has this been a failure? <laughs> The... It has been a failure, like all, like all wars on terrorism, like in Afghanistan, like in Syria. And all. We know it's a failure. We know it doesn't work. So what can be done? Uh, there, France is now accused of uh, being a, a neo, 
back the ex-colonial power is accused of being the Trojan horse of the Western interest for the uh, mineral resources in that region. Maybe, maybe there is the case, but uh, from, there's not the, just the West was in interest in that region. It was interesting that uh, uh, when he talked about Mali, that now Mali, the problem in Mali is that the war on terrorism there hasn't improved a lot of the population, especially in the northern parts of that region. And that is that a failure of the French uh, army, uh, maybe in part, but it could be uh, put down also to the failure of the government to produce public services in that part of the world. And many uh, in the north of Chad feel uh, that they are more protected by jihadist group or nationalist Tuareg groups which, oper which operate in the region. So, and at the same time, in uh, the new power which has taken over after a coup, uh, Asimi Goila, the uh, president, and Shegel Mega, the, the prime minister, have been uh, making uh, an attempt I uh, heard it in the discourse of our previous uh, in the, uh, speaker, uh, saying that maybe Russia would be uh, better to help to fight. But at the same time, maybe that's a bit of a mistake because the Wagner group that uh, Mali is, is talking with uh, has not been very successful in the region. I realize that France is at the root of the problem also. It's France's invasion, uh, attack on Gaddafi in Libya, which opened all kind of worms in the region. That is a fact. That's France's responsibility. But that was Sarkozy's responsibility. It was not Hollande who decided to intervene. It was not Macron who kept on the intervention. Now, France has decided to downgrade its operation in the region, bringing down from 5,000 to 2,500, has left Mali. Mali is now considering uh, talking to Russians. Good luck to them and to the and to uh, the Malian population for the backing of the Russian. But at the same time, France is working with the four, four, four other countries, which in the region think that the help of France is needed. I don't think France is on a neo-colonialist project there. France is caught in a trap, doesn't know how to get out of the situation uh, without the... And we know that this region is a powder keg, and it's the influence of Islamist group, jihadist terrorist groups, is destabilizing all the countries in the okay. region. And France is not a complice of this jihadist, as many people say on social network, and as the previous talker even uh, implied. Okay, Adam Agui, do you, how, how would you respond to that? Because the, the Wagner Group and, and, and Russia do have, uh, they have been active in other countries in Africa, and uh, that's something which has arguably caused problems in some places. I'm thinking specifically of Libya. Do you think that that would be a helpful intervention in the Sahel region to invite in another? Uh, foreign uh, army or, or, or foreign mercenaries from other countries? Or is it simply time for the, the foreign countries to get out of Africa and for these nations to fix them pro their problems themselves? That is the real issue. Uh, actually, uh, if you look at the history of foreign interventions, they have not been always successful. The case in point could be Afghanistan, where the Soviet Union, the UK, and recently the US collapsed despite a lot of means they use there. Uh, in the case of Africa today, uh, we know that France is failing in the Sahel region, and it is going to be in a quagmire if it continues to be trying to using military might, even though it has to rely on logistical support from the US government and military forces from uh, other nations under the uh, framework. The reality is this. African problems will have to be fixed by Africa itself. Under the African Union, under the regional organizations, such as the Economic Community of West African States, there are military framework for peace and security to be handled. They need to put the forces in order to address the problems at home. On the other hand, as long as the political and developmental challenges 
from within these countries are not addressed, you will still continue to have people trying to revolt against those who are in place, who are benefiting from the riches of the countries within African countries. In the case of France, I do believe that France is taking too much it can carry, trying to control African nations at this time when it doesn't have even the capability to address its budgetary challenges is a tall order for it. I do believe we need to have a conversation with France to tell her to sit on the back seat to allow African countries to try to fix their problems. If that is not done, it will continue on and on and on, like in Afghanistan and other foreign crises. And down the line, France will have to be slow and it will be too long. We need to create the forces from our region. We have the capacity, we have the means, if you put the financial means that we have in Africa to address the security challenges, climate issues, epidemic issues, the transnational challenges, discuss with the rest of the world that is trying to come and talk to Africa at this time, when Africa is lured and being an interested place to be, I think we would be able to address the problem. Yes, but just if I could, Adam, is there for his interest. If I could yeah. just very quickly, you said these problems need an African solution, but some of these institutions within the populations in the countries, I'm thinking of ECOWAS, they, they're regarded with suspicion by populations in the countries because they're seen as old president's clubs that are too slow to act and too slow to criticise leaders. So, so where does the solution come from? You are totally right. I am a former director of communication of ECOWAS myself. So I know that these organizations, they have not always delivered the goods. And this is the real problem. There is a problem of legitimacy. Okay. If they don't produce results, nobody will follow them. And the same thing applies also at the national level. But okay. realizing that today that we have to fix the problem is the time to bring back all the stakeholders to sit and say, let's make sure that the populations that are against us realize that we are willing now to address the problem. And that's what is happening in Burkina Faso when you see the people in the street challenging Mr. Rock Mark Kabore, who has not been able to deliver. And they are yearning for the leadership of Blaise Compaore, who was toppled in 2014. Okay. They are regretting his departure because he was able at least to stabilize the country. Okay, we are almost out of time. Uh, a final question to you, Jacques Roland, before we wrap up this discussion. And in one minute, if you can, is it time for France to get out of Africa? Uh, I think that uh, the countries where France is present, as I said, the G5 and now the G4, want France to stay. They need uh, the French help, they need the funding, they need the army in order to fight the jihadist group. France. Uh, cannot just get out just like that. Uh, if they could, they would, I suppose, because uh, this, thing, this uh, intervention brings more problems than uh, solutions and satisfactions. And we know that the situation relies that we, we France would like uh, African countries to be able to, contra to govern their country democratically, with legitimacy, but when you see Mali has had two coups in the last two years, in August 2020, 2021, will there be a demo will there be democratic elections in February next year, as they've promised? We don't know. The political uh, and uh, economic environment is so unstable that uh, there's there's nothing to gain in the in the short term okay. there. And the solutions will have to come, as I, we all agree, from African population and their governments providing for okay. all and components a, of and their one, population. If I could, because we're in the final 10 seconds, a one-word answer from you, uh, Adama Gay. Is it time for France to leave Africa? France must leave. And this discourse I heard from... Uh, uh, the gentleman who just spoke is just paternalistic. France has failed always everywhere in military battles. It needs to understand that African problems will not be fixed by France. It's okay. time to stop this kind of discourse. And now we are absolutely out of time. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for this lively discussion. I do appreciate it. Thank you to Jacques Roland.
and Adama Gay. And thank you too for watching. Remember, you can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, just head to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. And I'm at Halat Mohideen. So from me and the whole team here in Doha, it's bye for now.